Hey cubs, well... Scrappy, what are you doing here? Well, where's Patches? What are you doing down there? That's better. Ah, as you can see, we're doing Create This Book today. Now this is the second episode I've done on the first book and it just so happened that whilst I was halfway through recording, Mariah Elizabeth announced the third book. We've got some work to do if we want to catch up, so let's get going. So we are starting off with Create A Combo. Now for this one I knew I wanted to do desserts. Um, you know, Mariah Elizabeth herself does dessert theme and the good gravy i cannot speak today <laughs> um she does dessert themed animals um as does bellamina and i know aussie craft has also done one um but my favorite desserts are profiteroles and apple crumble neither of which would really translate well uh into a design so I thought, what the heck, is going to have to be ice cream because it would be the only thing that was really recognisable. And I picked three breeds that I thought would work well with the flavours of ice cream, sort of use their markings as the ice cream flavour. So the first choice was Dalmatian, something I'd wanted to do for a while actually because both Mariah and Bellamina have both done dessert Dalmatians. Uh, Mariah's Speckles is the dragon fruit one, and Bellamina has a. I'll try and remember. Oh, it's lemon poppy seed muffin called Poppy. Um, but my girl, Bo, is mint chocolate chip ice cream, and I just thought that worked really well. The bull terrier in the middle, Bubba, is bubblegum. And Sid, who is an old English sheepdog on the end, is strawberry and chocolate. Now, despite the odd kinds of names, they all actually have meanings for these. So Bubba is from Hubba Bubba, a quite popular brand of bubblegum, at least here in the UK. I don't know about elsewhere. elsewhere. Um, Bo is short for Bodmin. A Bodmin is actually where Ke Kelly's... Cornish ice cream is made, uh, which is the next county over from us. And then Sid is short for Sidmouth, which uh, is a local seaside town which has the most amazing homemade ice cream you will ever have. So if you ever get the chance, you have to go there. <laughs> you, you'll see it as soon as you get into the town because it's always packed. Uh, there's always a queue outside, uh, which is just great to see, and they're open all year round. Um, yeah, so once I designed them and I decided to put them inside an ice cream tub, because I thought that would be kind of cute, uh, I thought I'd paint an orange background for them. I went round them with a Posca pen, but I thought I'd use acrylic for the actual background, because I didn't think the uh, Posca would cope too well doing the entire thing. However, this orange, whilst it doesn't look quite as obvious here, it dries almost terracotta, that kind of orange, which is not what I wanted. I wanted a really nice, bright, vibrant orange, so I was a bit sad with that. I even tried adjusting the colour, um, it's a pre one, and it just didn't work. So in the end, I decided to make these shapes off camera, just ice creams and paw prints with the matching colours for the dogs just to make it pop a bit more, make it a bit more interesting and I'm really pleased that I did that. It's probably my favourite page so far. Um, however, page number two is also quite exciting for me and that is Create Letters. Now, Create Letters, I had this idea actually whilst watching one of Bellamina's Create This Book episodes where she did this page it's entirely different but it just made me think about it myself and my sister um, came up with this game when we were kids we called it the alphabet game and what you did was um, you would pick a subject and you would both have to write down something for each letter of the alphabet so in 
in this case, and one of my favourite rounds was breeds of dog. But the rule stated that you would you wouldn't get points if you both named the same thing in your lists. So the dog breed one was a tricky one because we both knew a lot about dog breeds but as time went on and I discovered more breeds from around the world it did kind of give me a bit of an edge and doing this uh, for the page in the book I also discovered there were breeds for every letter which I never thought there were um, but to make this page even more fun I decided to draw three of the breeds uh, this page did give me a bit of a hard time I had to redo it, I think, three times in the end because I just couldn't get the dogs looking right. Um, two of the breeds I hadn't drawn for a very long time and the other one I had never drawn. So yeah, it did take a f fair few tries. So this first one is a Bully cu Cutter and it is an Indian breed, uh, particularly popular, I believe, in Pakistan. It's huge, huge dog. Uh, used for hunting and guarding but sadly is also used in dog fighting. Uh, the second one on the left hand side, the one lying down, is a Hungarian Pumi, not to be mis uh, mistaken for the Puli. <laughs> Both Hungarian breeds but the Pumi is more terrier like, it has the folded ears and the curled tail, which suggests uh, spits type breeds in the bloodline as well. So that's your um, huskies and that sort of thing. Um, and finally, this is the Otterhound. It's one of my favourite breeds um, after the Rottweiler. And it's a endangered native breed. You know, uh, it is in a British breed. But uh, ever since they banned otter hunting in the 70s, the breed has declined in popularity. It is sort of gaining traction again, but not in a good way. Well, you know, not quickly enough. And sadly, at one point, I don't, this was from a few years ago now, um, it was actually more endangered than the giant panda, but being part of the uh, Canis lupus familiaris family meant it didn't count basically because dogs as a whole are not endangered um, but that's enough waffle about that yeah all these names that I am writing down are all breeds of dog um, from various parts of the world um, if you're curious you should be able to pause them and read them I don't know how well you'll be able to see um, my handwriting is not the best. Some of them I did have to check the spellings, um, especially for the Swedish Wolfhound's proper name. Uh, there was just no way I could spell that. Um, I can't pronounce it either, so don't ask. Uh, yeah, and I stuck pages into the book once I was done. Um, they're not the straightest pages I've done. And finally, the page of emotion. Now this one, again, took me some doing. Um, yeah, I, I need to work on my dogs, basically. But for this one, I knew, sort of, from the beginning that I was going to pick a Staffy. Um, Staffordshire Bull Terriers have these gorgeous smiles, as do the American Pit Bull Terrier. And then I decided I would actually incorporate both breeds. Just, I wanted to test myself a bit, see if I could um, do something obvious, um, you know, make them look obviously separate breeds. Um, I don't think I did that too well, um, not as well as I would have liked. I mean, Staffordshire Bull Terriers are smaller than the American Pit Bulls. Um, yeah, but they're both gorgeous breeds that unfortunately have really bad reputations due to bad owners. Um, you know, I could do a whole video on that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> That's not why we're here. I've already been rambling way too much about dog breeds. As you can tell, dogs are just one of my passions. Um, so yeah, I can kind of waffle a bit. So 
yeah, for this one, again, I, I think I end up doing these guys off camera um, on a separate page. As I started to line this in the book, I realized that the type of liner I'd chosen was just a bad choice. I used the brush tip and yeah, it just, it wasn't good. Um, and I did mess it up. I still messed up, but um, I mean, the legs on that top one are just atrocious. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna stop waffling now and let you guys enjoy the rest of this in peace and quiet or at least with some music. 